I created an assessment framework for K-12 educators. I call it the assessment puzzle. I'm curious if any of you have seen, experienced, created any assessment frameworks that help teachers do this redesign to reward the human thinking and not the machine mimicry. Definitely. Definitely. I think that the you need to value exactly what AI cannot necessarily replic- replicate. I think action, presence, adaptability, emotional intelligence, judgment under uncertainty. I think that capacity to create meaning with and for others is absolutely vital. And one of the things that we do at the She Leads AI Academy is we have an AI educator cohort, and this is already our model. We're working with women and we're not prioritizing learning theory. We're looking for women who are ready to take action. Participants are presenting to real audiences. They're handling those unpredictable questions that come from a live in the moment experience. And they're refining their skill set through that collaborative feedback. They lead learning experiences that require that kind of human-centered facilitation moment. So I think it's these in-the-moment realities that really reveal who they are as action takers, as educators. And that can't happen in any way that traditional assessments ever could. I mean, a lot of training videos now are online videos followed by multiple choice test questions. I mean, come on, who who thinks that that's actually anything more than just passive learning? Live performance is vital. How do they show up? How do they guide a room? How do they respond to someone that's confused or challenged? Iterative improvement. How do they use feedback loops to revise their approach or polish their delivery? I think that meaningful creation and community contribution, that internship in action is really what we've prioritized because we want to be taking action in a way that really embraces what's becoming most important for action takers to have in their repertoire. Well, that. David, anything to add? The impromptu nature, right? Um, pop quiz. Um, students hated pop quiz, but for, as educators, we know pop quiz is one of the most effective ways to really keep our students um, alert at all times and be prepared. And so in the context of generative AI, I think that's one of the most powerful way in which we can test. So what I ask students is to actually give me not only their output, but also their prompts. I encourage them to use AI, but I wanted to see how their prompts that will exhibit the level of thinking that they do when when they uh, actually answer questions. So at times I would just create a situation, uh, a plan for an impromptu quiz or test uh, in the class. They're all nervous about it, but said, don't worry about it. You know, I, I'm not going to um, grade hard, but I'm going to uh, test you and I'm going to teach you how to uh, face this kind of situation. And so they, um, I allow them to use AI even in the process, but because of the impromptu nature of this exam, they weren't prepared for it, right? So they have to think how can they prompt in the best way to generate the right information in the shortest amount of time possible. And so once I get their prompts, and this is uh, this is ch- more challenging if they're using public uh, LLM. So I started to develop my own, essentially, uh, AI application that students can use. It functions just like ChatGPT or uh, you know Gemini, but at least it is within my control. So I could look at everything that they've put in there, and um, I can then develop, again, prompt engineering framework in the background to evaluate the level of their thinking and inform them, hey, when you ask it this way, think about it that way. So it is essentially the application of Socratic method, right? So there is a a term Socratic AI tutor um, uh, to to the students. So that's that's one of the ways in which I try to create this uh, uh, situational-based assessment for my students. I love that. If you're listening to that and thinking, oh, I am not techie, 
enough to create my own solution, my own large language model, whatever you've created, David. I do this a lot. I call it assess the chats. And I use a tool called School AI. They have a feature called Spaces. And it's guardrailed, so it's really safe, secure, compliant for that K-12 level, but also great for higher ed and adult learners as well. That does a lot what David is, it sounds like David is saying he has done and created for himself. Uh, Bhavani, anything to add? Assessment yeah, frameworks? Absolutely. I teach online. So having that pop quizzes in class, that doesn't work for me. Because how do I control my students? I don't see them. I'm not in touch with them regularly. So for me, the only medium that I communicate is through whatever LMS that I'm using. And I'm constantly demoing if a new tool comes up. It's very important, you know, as educators, we want to learn more about AI. It's equally important to have students, make them aware of what tools they have. If I see Google Nano Banana, and if I show them that this can produce the entire homework for you, I make a video for my students telling them what to check, what not to check. I have GPTs for my students because they love to use GPTs and they don't have the fear of judgment. They can tell they hate math and GPT will still answer. So all of these tools are very, very, very important to me. And I stopped focusing on tests that grade more. I am doing more of presentations. Use AI to come up with a presentation that you would be using your everyday scenarios. You're a grandmother, you're a hiker, you are a plumber. I don't care who you are, but use AI to come up with a product or with a presentation that you're using this particular topic in pre-calculus in your everyday work. AI will help you to get the information, but you are coming up with the presentation, you are creating it. So that cognitive thinking is constantly going on and that adds an extra layer of information for my students. So heavy on the tests, proctoring tests, Giving you quizzes, online class doesn't work. Give, show me what you know. I want to measure and I want to see how I'm transferring my knowledge, my enthusiasm, my curiosity to you. So checking that curiosity artifacts is very important in online classes. I was going to jump in, Lindy. I, I can talk a little bit about, I, I wouldn't call it a framework, but let me give some tools for educators in the, so that they don't have to feel overwhelmed and saying, okay, now I have to redo everything. Keep what you have and build on it and just say, if AI is to make us more efficient and better at what we do, we should be able to be able to ask more of our students. And so let's take the new things and bring them to application. So as an example, you said maybe you're not the most technical person, you know, maybe some of our students are or not. Well, AI brings that ubiquity to everybody, right? We can become technical. We can build an app. Somebody who doesn't program can build an app pretty easily if it's a basic app, right? And so we can ask them to do things. Hey, build a website, build this application, take this calculus idea and, and put it into action in some way. And I think that's one way of, of, of doing this, um, you know, assessing, you know, something at a harder, you know, assuming that they're going to use AI to write the essay or to answer the multiple choice or, or these other things, we can get them to apply it in a, in a different way. Presentation is the other one. Even in an online class, I have my students in groups record presentations, right, and submit those presentations online. So it's just another way of them practicing, putting a presentation together. And yes, they can use AI. They all love Gamma now or beautiful AI, and they create these great presentations, but that doesn't mean they can present it well, right? And so if we could bring that back into K through 12, you know, I don't know how, but maybe maybe presenting earlier on in their in their school career. And then working in project teams is another one, you know, not not individual assessments, but the ability to a project team always falls apart in a semester, right? Why? Because they don't respond to each other because they don't work together. They don't, you know, they're all on different time scales. Somebody waits till the last minute to jump in. Those are the real world things that they're going to run into on a real world project, right? And so baking those kind of things in helps tools. So I don't call it a framework, but I think those tools would, would help folks. 